already. So this is Act 3, Scene 4. This is where Macbeth shows that he's a little bit uh, crazy. And we start to get, I guess, maybe a little bit more compassion feeling towards him. Uh, so basically the scene is mostly told through images as the poorly cut off picture there. But basically uh, he sees Banquo's ghost sitting at the table at an empty seat. And everyone's basically saying, hey, Macbeth, sit down. What are you doing? Uh, and he does feel a bit off. And then Lady Macbeth tries to cover, cover for him. That's kind of the broad picture. Uh, Macbeth at one point says, the table round to the first murderer, right? there's blood upon thy face. And the first murderer says, tis Banquo's then. So that's pretty smooth. Uh, and also taps into the motif of blood, as you might imagine. Okay, Macbeth says... Then comes my fit again. I had else been perfect, whole as the marble, founded as the rock, as broad and general as the casing air. But now I am cabined, cribbed, confined, bowed into saucy doubts and fears. So that's his uh, medieval version of kind of being anxious, I guess, uh, or fearful or some combination of those two things. So if you believe, and the question, of course, is, do you, would you support uh, it's kind of a, a report on him that would say that he is mentally unwell at this point and also beforehand. So is he mentally unwell now and mentally unfit? Is that what's happening and that's why there's problems? And, and before or not? Or is he just kind of making excuses for his opinions, I guess? He notes, there the, gr there the grown serpent lies, the worm that fled, hath nature that in time will venom breed, no teeth for the present. So basically, he sees the world as a dangerous, scary place that's a snake that will bite him and cut off him and yada yada, scary stuff. All right, so we've got some stuff here. So it says in the margin, the effect of guilt upon Macbeth, he believes he sees. So his absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. The table's full. So this is basically, I'm not going to read it, but this is him saying the table's full. There's someone there. And then the person we realize is the ghost, the ghost of Banquo. And then Lady Macbeth tellingly says, are you a man? Which is a very quotable, short, memorable thing. Because uh, normally she speaks in quite long poems and such. So this is really quite precise and useful as a quote. So maybe stick a sticky note out the side of that one because you might well use it. Uh, she, he says at this point, A, and a bold one, that there, dare look on that which might appeal the devil. So he's got his manly confidence back. And Lady Macbeth amusingly says, oh, proper stuff. Uh, and then he talks about the dagger in the air, blood that has been shed, what quite unmanned in folly. So it's all the discussion of, are you a man? Would a man do the right thing? Would you be killing more people? He says, what man dare I bear? Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, or the Hy Hyrian tiger. Take any shape but that, and my firm nerves shall never tremble. Why so being gone, I am a man again. So he has regained his confidence, his manliness, his masculinity, all the things that makes him a, either a great power or a great toxic virus, as depending on your view of masculinity. Later on, he says, it will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. Augurs and understood relations have by maggot pies and coughs and rooks brought forth the secret man of blood. So again, we're kind of tying nature together with man. He sees nature and man as one thing. Uh, most modern conceptions of nature would say, you know, mother nature and those sorts of things. But he's establishing a male version of nature. For you, when you picture nature, the critical question is, do you think of nature as a male or a female figure? And this might seem like a stupid question, but a lot of our language leads to our beliefs, whether you realize that or not. All right, last little bit. I promised to try and keep it short, but this is a long one. I am in blood steeped in so far that should I wade no more, returning where as tedious as go over. You lack the seasons of all nature's sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. So she's basically using the motif of, again, you're not sleeping anymore. It might be affecting your judgment as uh, drug use might affect us in modern times and might be the sort of thing that you might be able to establish as, well, I was under the influence of drugs at that time, so I wasn't able to act in the way that I normally would as a promise, soul safe person. So this is, again, your question. Uh, does his lack of sleep play a role in the way that he's behaving? Yes or no? And that is an important and long scene for us to look at. Cheers.